for the merchandise, for the button hooks, for the cotton goods, for the hard goods, for the soft goods, for the fancy goods.
Mr. Squires, yes, I'd be interested in a rig for this Sunday if you could accommodate me. Well, I suppose you ought to see the man in charge of hiring rigs, who's late as usual. Hey, Greg, Marcellus, you old son of a gun, what? In... But Greg, Professor Hill, Harold Hill's the name. But Greg, why'd you let me know he was coming? Why, I didn't know I was coming myself. Besides, how would I know you'd end up in a small little tank town like this? You used to be a pretty big slicker back in the business with me. Ah, uh, too many close shaves the way you work. Besides, I got me a nice, comfortable girl. Ethel Toppelmeyer, boss's knees. Gone legitimate, huh? I always knew you'd end up to no good. Ah, uh, so what you into now? You're not back in the band business. I heard you was in steam automobiles. I was. What happened? Somebody actually invented one. No. <laughs> so, give me the lowdown here, Mars. Uh, you'll never get anywhere with these neck bowed eyes. <laughs> Besides, we got ourselves a stuck up music teacher here. He'll expose you before you get your grip unpacked. Male or female? The music teacher? She's a librarian, female. Perfect. That's just what I wanted to hear. If she passes by, point her out to me. I will. But how are you going to start the pitch? Same as before. First, get that music teacher off balance. And then my next step is to get your town out of the serious trouble it's in. Well, River City isn't in any trouble. Hmm. Then I need to create something. I need to create a desperate need for a boys band. You remember. Now, what's new around here? What can I use? Nothing. Well, except the billiard parlors just put in a new pool table. You've never had a pool table before? No, only billiards. <coughs> That'll do. Either you are closing your eye to a situation you do not wish to acknowledge, or you are not aware of the calendar disaster indicated by the presence of a pool table in your community. Well, you got trouble, my friend. Right here is a trouble right here in River City. Why, sure, I'm a billiard player. Certainly mighty proud to say I'm wise, mighty proud to say it. I consider that the hours I spend with the cue in my hand to be golden. Have to cultivate four cents with a cool head and a keen eye. Now, friends, let me tell you what I need. You got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets in the table. Pockets that mark the difference between the gentleman and the bum with a capital B in that rhymes with B and that stands for cool. Now I know you folks are the right kind of parents. I'm gonna be perfectly frank. Would you like to know what kind of conversations goes on while they're a little bit around the hall? They'll be trying out Bebo, trying out Cuba, trying out Taylor made like cigarette feet, and bragging all about how they're gonna cover up a telltale breath with scents. And one fine night, they leave the pool hall, heading for the dance at the armory. Liberty men and scarlet women and rag time. Shameless music that'll drag your son and your daughter with the arms of an animal. Devil's Playground, Trouble, oh, yeah, right here in River City, right with a capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for cool. Stands for cool. We've surely got trouble, We've surely got trouble. right here in River City. Right here. Gotta figure out a way to keep the young ones moral after school. Mothers of River City, heed the warning before it's too late. Watch for the telltale signs of corruption. The minute your son leaves the house, does he rebuckle his knickerbockers below the knee? <laughs> Are certain words creeping into his conversations? Words like swell and so's your old man. If so, my friends, you got trouble. Oh, got trouble. Right here in River City. Right here in with a capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for fool. We've surely got trouble. Right here. With a T.
because of his lips. He's ashamed. We know all about the lisp, Amaryllis. Well, Winthrop? But he won't say it. You think you am a, you think you am a, you think you am a, Amaryllis? Amaryllis, Amaryllis? Why does he get so mad just because of his lips? It's not only because of the lisp. That's just part of it, dear. Well, then what's the other part? He just doesn't talk very much. Not even to you or your mother? No, dear. We'll all have to be a little patient with Winthrop. Well, I'm patient with him. Marianne, I'm having some troubles with the boy. Oh, what's his name? Philip. You see, he doesn't ever talk to me, but I do him every night on the evening star. You have to do it the very second you see it, too, or else it doesn't count. Good night, my Philip. Good night. Sleep tight. Well, dear, you have plenty of time. If not, Philip, you'll find someone else. No, I'll end up an old maid like you! <laughs> <laughs> well, for the time being, just say goodnight, my someone. You can put the right name in when the right someone comes along. Well, I guess that's better than nothing. Yes, it is. Now you can play your cross hand. <laughs> now I may play my cross hand piece.
right, welcome to River City Zones to the 4th of July exercise set for indoors here at Madison Gymnasium. I count the weather. Four score! <coughs> Members of the school board will now present a patriotic tablet. Oh, the members of the school board will not present a patriotic tablet. Some disagreement about costumes, I suppose. Instead, the Wontar Negroes of the local wigwam of Hiawatha will present a spectacle my wife. In which my wife, Lady McKinney Shin, will take me.
other people get so excited. And tonight, Frank got you, strangled loose, laying in that for three and a half hours without moving a muscle. Never mind! I want that smell by his credentials! Grab that brother! He almost blew up my wife! Thank you, Professor. You've got to make an example of this one. Really? What he does, the game does. Jeez, old Pete, let me go. You wild kids, you tagging down Main Street after my oldest girl last Sunday. I wasn't either tagging. Don't you contradict me! We was just walking. Together. <laughs> you watch your phraseology. I know what she's doing. My little Gracie Sr. Now you stay away from my oldest girl, or you'll hear from me to who laid the rails! Hill, I'll talk to you Monday morning about this bad thing over at City Hall. Ten o'clock sharp. Ten o'clock sharp. Man, I want this spell by his credentials! Oh, Constable, I'll be responsible for the boy. You don't know this kid. He's tough. He's got a game away on his side. Now, Constable, I'll show you how to break up a game. Oh, young lady, oh, miss, what's your name? Zanita. I didn't have any idea he was begging me. God! Zanita, do you know Tommy? <laughs> well, I... Um... Tommy, this here is Zanita. I want you to escort her home by way of the candy kitchen. <coughs> yes, sir. Do I have to? You have to. Yes, sir. Gods. <laughs> you know, Professor, you're a pretty bright young fellow. But you made a couple mistakes. Oh? <laughs> the mayor happens to own the villa part of and the new pool table. Oh. And what was my other mistake? That's Anita. She's the mayor's oldest girl. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Hill, Professor Hill. We're in the school board. We need your credentials. Academic certificates. Nothing of the kind. Letters and papers. Make them put up a bond. Wait, what is this I'm hearing? Say Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> no, no, no. Talk real slow. Down here. Ice cream. See, singing is only sustained talking. Four weeks for the instruments to arrive. Oh, it still does, but it takes four weeks for the uniforms. 
Oh no, Greg, you haven't added uniforms. Uniforms and instruction books. Instruction books? But you can't pass yourself off as a music teacher for any four weeks. Mars. You don't know one note from another. That's just it. I developed a revolutionary new method called the Think System, where you don't even have to bother with the notes. But Greg, in four weeks, the people will want to hear music. You'll have to lead a band. That's just it. Once the uniforms arrive, they forget about everything else, at least long enough for me to collect and leave. Oh, this is a refined operation, son, and I have got it timed down to the very last wave of the brakeman's hand on the last train out of town. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Washburn. You got a little canoe one to do? <laughs> well, I... Say, I could set you up with that little sister. Lovely girl. Teach her Sunday school. Ah. Uh, no wide-eyed, eager, wholesome, innocent Sunday school teacher for me. That kind of girl spins webs no spider her. Now listen, boy. A girl who trades in all that purity merely wishes to trade my independence for her security. Need only a affirmative, she will file. First to marching down the aisle, no golden glories gleaming for some dust. No, sir. For no dia do I play fun. I can tell you that right now. I sorrow, I hiss. How could any ignorance be compared to bliss? I smart, I fizz. For the lady who knows what time it is, I cheer.
characteristics of a trumpet virtuoso? I don't know if I understand you entirely, Professor. Why, if your boy has that same firm chin and those splendid cheek muscles, by George, not that he ever truly could be great, though. Oh, and in the name of St. Bridget, why not? Well, you see, all the famous cornet players were Irish. Um, O'Clark, O'Mendez, O'Klein. Professor, we're Irish. No, no, that clinches it. Sign here, Mrs. Peru, your boy was born to play the cornet. Fine, fine, that'll be seven dollars earnest money. Nothing more due until the first installment, payable at the opening of band practice. Oh, and of course, I'll need the boy's measurements for his band uniform. His uniform? Would it have a, a, a... A stripe? Certainly, my boy. A wide red stripe running down each side. What do you think of that? You'll have to excuse Linfrock, Professor. We can't even get him to say three words a day, even to us. It will truly be a miracle if you can get him to join the band. Where did you say you were from, Professor? Gary, Indiana. In fact, Gary Conservatory was my alma mater. What's she now? <laughs> Gary Conservatory, gold medal class of Oct five. Why, hello, Miss Marion. Do you work sitting on everyone's home like this? Marion. We're not interested in having Winthrop in the band. Now say, why not let the boy's father decide? The boy's father is dead. Anything else? <clears throat> I'm sorry. But you see, that's all the more reason for Winthrop to be in something like this. My brother is a ten-year-old problem child who can't understand why his father was taken away. Would you care to explain it to him? He's been brooding about it for two years. And as to you and your musical tricks, why don't you join a business with a nice carnival man who sells gold-painted watches and glass diamond rings? Musical tricks. Miss Marion, I hardly think. Professor, you'll have to excuse Marion. She's not really... Please, Mrs. Pru, I'm sure at heart she's as lovely as yourself. Good day to you, Mrs. Pru. Good day to you too, Professor. Good day. Marion Peru. Well, we must never, darling. Don't you ever think of your future? Mary Indiana Conservatory, class of about five. Now, darling. Now, Mama, the fact that he claims his commodity is music does not, in this particular case, impress me. All right, darling. All right. But it's a commonly well-known principle that if you keep the flint in one drawer and the steel in another, you ought to never start a fire. <laughs> Winthrop, Winthrop, I need you to go to the library for me and ask Miss Grubb to give you the book I set aside. It's the Indiana State Educational Journal, 1890-1910. The large brown volume with black corners. Do I have to? You won't have to talk to anyone. I've written it all down. Here you go. circulation, and you can't wiggle your fingers. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> you can go blind. Tommy! Didn't I say get that spellbinder, pair of those credentials? I said a morning of two light for and one. Yes, George, but... And now the whole town's turned upside down. The school board's taking up street and down out, instead of pretending the city matters. Mayor Shin, I found something very interesting in this book about Professor Hill's alma mater. Yes, who? Is university. Oh, I know all about that. In fact, that's the only thing I can never get out of it. Gary Conservatory, class of Aug 5. Well, if you just take a little time to read about <coughs> the conservatory, I don't think you'll have to look much further. It's on page. Oh, look, Wells Fargo Wagon is just coming up from the depot. At this hour of day, the Wells Fargo Wagon. It could be the band instruments. The band instruments? Yeah. I want that man's credentials!
Lamar Winthrop. Men, you will each receive individual instruction in due course. Until then, stay off the streets, become acquainted with your instruments, and remember, think the minuet and G. La di da di da di da di da. La di da. La di da. La di da di da di da di da. La di da. La di da. Sister, sister, and then with the eight inch scissors and the scissors saw go sing. Oh, sister! Round one for you, Mr. Hill. But I'm here some by God too. Now them horns are pretty sure in order. I'll see you in front of the grand jury. Now, Miss Mary, about that one. George, come on! Hold on. I've got to get something from the librarian. Now, about that book. <laughs> Professor Hill, I've never seen Winthrop so happy. Thank you. Uh, it was my pleasure, Miss Mary. Start her up, Mr. Washburn. Wait to see the, move, the new moves Mr. Hill taught. <laughs> All right, well, let's be. This should poop be. <laughs> <laughs>
The next time he comes to call, you get him alone. And if you haven't gotten the gumptions to have my ideas, well, hey, well, there's nothing wrong with a lady like him. So, Mama, wrong. where have you been? Fitness. Fishing? With Harold. He told me all about how time here in here. He even said he'd take me here someday. He told me it's not how you have any evidence. Just long enough. He spoiled Illinois for me, and he ain't gonna spoil Iowa. Say, what kind of music teacher are you? You didn't see him. He's no more professor. Band leaders are always called professor. It's a harmless deception. He's a fine director. And just a minute. Fine director? Have you heard one note of music from any band? No, but. But nothing, girly girl. He's never formed a band in his life, and he never will. <laughs> Crossing. No, sir. I got leave. What about that fellow? Though? I can see you ain't the one to leave you. Wait. You don't know me yet. Is that an invitation? <laughs> I mean, I don't know you, and... Yes, I need more time anyway. I mean, as well as I'd like to. It's fine by me, girly girl. I never met a man that sells handles. That's something quite different. It takes a real salesman, I can tell you that. Handles have a limit of the peeling. What am I doing? I best not train them all get fired. I have to leave word about that fellow Hill. Leave word with me. Not on your tin type. How do I know you deliver these letters? Try me. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you're protecting? That guy's got a girl in every county in Illinois. That's 102 counties. Not including the piano he goes he's up to and I can keep their mouths shut. You haven't heard the last of me, girly girl. Mama. Oh, why, Professor Hill? Mrs. Peru, top of the evening. Miss Mary. Why don't you and Mary Ann come sit a spell? I've got some jelly on the stove. There's no jelly on the stove, Mama. Well, then I'll put some on, then. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we sit as your mother said? Well... You did ask me to call. Professor Hill, it's just... What I'm trying to say is... I must be very dull company for a man of your experience. Now say, where'd you get an idea like that? One hears rumors of traveling salesmen. Now, Miss Marion, you mustn't believe everything you hear. Besides, one even hears rumors of little librarians. Oh, I suppose you're referring to Uncle Maddie. <clears throat> Uncle Maddie? Mr. Madison, my father's best friend. No matter what they say, he left me an assured job so Mother and Winthrop and I would have some security. Surely you don't believe... Oh, no, no, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. And why do you think people start those rumors? Narrow-mindedness, jealousy, jealousy mostly, I guess. Exactly. And jealousy mostly starts rumors about traveling salesmen. What have you heard? Just that. But it, it stands to reason that the disappointment and jealousy can lead to... I mean, take you, for example. Your attentions to teachers and customers 
Could easily be Mr. Pemberton, mightn't they? I mean, now honestly, mightn't they? Why? And if another salesman or someone were jealous, then they could be downright lies, couldn't they? What could? Rumors and things. Why, of course. It just stands to reason that you should never believe everything you hear. I mean, if you discuss things... Miss Marion, I would be delighted to discuss anything in the world with you. But couldn't we do it sitting down? You do sit, your knees bending all right? <laughs> we could sit on the floor steps. Or we could sit over at the hollow log over at the footbridge. I couldn't think of it. Just to talk. Maybe there in 15 minutes. Another time, maybe tomorrow. My dear little librarian, pile up enough tomorrows and you'll find you've collected nothing but a bunch of empty yesterdays. I don't know about you, but I'd like to make today worth remembering. The footbridge, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Mama, Mama, I told Professor Hill I'd meet him at the footbridge in 15 minutes. <laughs> Glory be in this name, sweet
lot of things to know. Crap! Oh, excuse me. I'm expecting a cable from Hector Berlois. This could be it. What now? Who's the salesman here? Sounds like she's the one selling and you're buying. Had to keep her off balance, didn't I? She's so off balance right now, you can't tell her from a cat boat in a hurricane. All right, Mars, go get the rig. Uh. <laughs> excuse me. Never a dull moment in the music business. Now, where were we? You were about to tell me what I don't know about you. Well, now that I think about it, it's not that important. We don't ever have to talk about that, Harold. The librarian hasn't felt much like doing research lately, but she did when you first came here. Oh? On what? Gary Conservatory, Gold Class of 05. Harold, there's no Gold Class of 05. Why, there's certainly... Because the town wasn't built till 06. I'll see you at the sociable. Why, if you knew all this time, why didn't you... Crack you a little. Crack pipe. Where is he? Where is Harold? He's nowhere around here. Let's drive by the creek. All right, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now wait a minute there, son. Now you suck, give me go. Not till I talk to you for a minute. You wouldn't tell the truth anyway. Would too. Tell you anything you want to know. Can you a band? No. Are you a big liar? Yes. <laughs> you a dirty rotten crook? Yes. You mean go, you big liar? Now what's the matter? You wanted the truth, didn't you? Now I'm bigger than you and stronger than you, so you might as well quit with them, because you're gonna get all of us. One, I think you're a great kid. I thought so from the beginning. That's why I wanted you in the band, so you'd quit sitting around, moping, feeling sorry for yourself. What band? Kid, I always think there's a band. Yeah, I always think I'm a child now. Well, now that I think about it, it's really none of your business. I think you never come to Riverfade. No, you don't, Winthrop. Then do you believe him? Everyone he ever said. The way all you kids walked around here all summer and looked and acted. <laughs> do the parents wish you'd never come to River City? Well, you do, don't you? No, Miss Rose. Now go, Harold, please. Go on, Professor, go on. I... I can't. Why not? For the first time in my life, I've got my foot caught in the door. <laughs> Greg! Greg, run! They're Stop coming!
I want you to think. Think real hard now. One, two.